Morning, good evening, Grace, brethren, and sisters. Let's have all of it back along with us here with our Word Awakening and uh, night four of our Spring 2021 Revival. And I look forward to uh, the fourth night here, uh, going further along in the series that we've had about having a biblical home. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Got a little bit of a clogged throat, so do I pray for that. I've had allergies here for about a month or so, for quite a while. So I'd uh, pray for us, pray for our uh, voice, that everything would uh, go well and be fine here. But well, look forward to the uh, Word of God here and uh, what the Lord has for us here this evening as we continue to look at a godly woman. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead here and open up with a word of prayer and get started. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the innocence of sin. Thank you for all that you've done, all the blessings you've bestowed upon our hearts and lives for our salvation, and for the joy that's in our heart, for the peace that's in our heart. And I pray that it would ever grow, that we would ever be biblical, that we would ever give ourselves to you, Lord, and what you have for us being what we ought to be, Lord, to build your kingdom. Just give us all that which we need, Father God, just to help us to be faithful and to use us, Lord, for your honor and for your glory. Be with a preaching time, and may what we say uh, help souls, Lord God. May we have more biblical homes, homes that are biblical, homes that are honoring and glorifying to the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, in this day and time, as it is so much needed. And just help us, Lord, like only you can, fortunate Christ. And we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. And now here we uh, continue. Uh, the message, just give a little bit of an overview of uh, what we've looked at so far in this message, A House Built by Wisdom. Uh, we looked at uh, simply that first thought, that a house is built by wisdom, and uh, saw, the, uh, saw the need there to give ourselves to prayer and to the reading and study of the Word of God, and that we must put this wisdom to practice that we have here. It's one thing to have the knowledge, it's another thing to actually do it. But I know simply getting that knowledge is really about to half the battle. Uh, but till we have the knowledge, we put it into practice, and then we looked at how biblical understanding also establishes a house. And then we looked at a godly husband and a, a godly father. And then uh, last uh, last night, uh, we were looking at a godly woman, and we looked at our first our first little uh, sub-point there about how she is to be a submissive woman. And even though a lot of these characteristics that we're talking about, they go greatly, greatly against the day and time that we live in, uh, but they are biblical. Uh, we see them in the Word of God here, and uh, we, see the, uh, we see the needs certainly here of what a godly woman is and uh, what a godly woman should do with her life here. And so we looked at letter A, a submissive woman, and now we go letter B here to a teaching woman. A teaching woman, looking at uh, what a woman's place is in the home and in the church and in society. And we'll start here in Titus chapter number 2. Pretty familiar text here if you know the Bible. A lot of things that we have here in the Word of God, uh, they are not uh, they're not necessarily, uh, uh, necessarily anything unusual. Probably nothing that you've never really heard if you've, uh, if you've listened to preaching about this, preaching, teaching, doing your own study. But now coming here to Titus in chapter 2, we look at verses 3 to 5. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word here and of all the scriptures that we're going to be looking at here this evening. So the aged women there, likewise, talking about elderly women. Because see, elderly women are to be examples. Like we could, uh, we, we look at our preceding verse there in chapter, in uh, verse number two of chapter two of Titus. And we see the same there is given to elderly men. But elderly people, you know, are to be an example. You know, they are to be the godly example. And like we've said throughout the meeting here, that's one thing that has began to disappear in our society as elderly people that are being examples. I know there's still some out there, and we praise God for that. Uh, but they are starting to disappear, though. And we must look here that elderly people are to be an example to the younger people in a biblical way. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. See, elderly women here are to be holy women. They are to have a godly behavior. 
as, as we always say here, I know these are some terms that aren't very popular in this day and time, not talking about being holy, like among liberals and newly evangelicals, but we see that that is very biblical. Elderly women are to have a godly behavior. They are to, uh, they are to carry themselves in a holy manner. Like we said, they're holy. That's rising above the ways of the world. These elderly women here, they're not to be like the world. We have enough. We have too many people who are like the world, and we need godly examples. Elderly women who are holy, who are not false accusers, uh, like people who just want to gossip about things and make up stories. You know, that's uh, you know that's just very wicked, and it's nothing new here. We see this here in Bible times with Paul writing to Titus. Uh, he wrote that for a reason, probably because there were people who were doing that. You know, that they, they were women around, around Titus who were just gossiping but not false accusers, not given to much wine, not people who drink alcohol. See, the Bible is staunchly against alcohol there. Uh, like in the book of Proverbs, the verse that we've looked at, uh, you know, very often there, it talks about how, you know, a person that's giving to wine is not a wise person. That's a very foolish person. But see, they're also teachers of good things. Say they've got to be teaching women, teachers of good things, of godly things, of things that are biblical, that they may teach the young women. See, a woman isn't to absorb authority over a man. A woman cannot be a preacher, but they are to teach the young women to be sober, to be serious-minded about these things of God. Not that they can ever have any fun, but, you know, it's not just all about fun. It's just not all about, all about having fun like what people want to do in this day and time, that they be serious-minded, especially about the things of God, about their homes, to love their husbands. And we're going to look at that a little bit more here later on. But like we've already looked at, a woman is, you know, is to be in submission to her husband and, and to love her husband. Like we said, I believe that was last night there. See, like a man, you know, is focused on his work, on his career and what God has for him. You know, like if that's a preacher, you know, especially his ministry. But a woman's focus is on her husband and on her children. And see, they're to love their husbands and be that right help me then. To love their children, amen. To love their children. To teach their children the ways of God. To be discreet. To be chaste. To be keepers at home. See, the woman is the keeper of the house. You know, that I know that sounds very old-fashioned for people in this day and time, but that is the biblical order of things. You know, a woman is to cook and to clean and take care of the children. You know, do the laundry, etc. Be discreet. Be chaste. You know, be hardworking, be honest, you know, do your best. Not that, obviously, not that you're going to be perfect, because, hey, guess what? You know, nobody's perfect, and, you know, not one person knows everything. But that is the order of things. That's how a woman is to be. You know, good, obedient to their own husbands. Once again, putting that in there. You know, a woman is to be submissive, you know, to a man, like we've already looked at. You know, a man is the head of the house. A man, you know, is the, you know, is the guide of the home. You know, you know, God speaks to a man about the direction, you know, about the direction of things, like, like with where his family is to live, you know, where his family is to go to church, you know, the things that his family, you know, is to partake in, you know, that the word of God be not blasphemed. See, the Apostle Paul even put in there, that the word of God be not blasphemed, because this is a biblical order of a home. You know, this is how people are to be. Of course, as we said, you know, there are other texts there, like the preceding text there, like in verses 1 and 2, talk about elderly men. And then after that, you know, you can read like verse 6 and onwards. You know, it also talks about young men because everybody, you know, has their place, you know, with their certain things, you know, being age, you know, being age appropriate. Like the Bible also says, you know, rebuke not an elder. You know, like me, I'm only 34 years old. I'll be 35 in July. You know, it's not my place, you know, to rebuke an older man of God, you know, that, that I am under, you know, the authority of. Now, that obviously isn't to say, you know, to distinguish things. You know, that doesn't mean that I can't preach against liberalism because I know, like, there are a lot of older preachers, you know, who are liberals and all on doctrine. That's not what that's talking about. But somebody... <coughs> you know, who I am to be in submission to, you know, like my authority, you know, like my pastor, you know, I have a pastor who was, you know, a little bit older than I am, you know, who was a bit, who is a middle-aged man. Well, actually, according to age, he actually is now a senior citizen, <laughs> not trying to make him feel old, but, you know, that's what that's talking about, you know, like me, 
you, you know, I, I submit myself to my pastor, you know, my pastor, you know, really, certainly really, you know, would be my boss, like as a missionary church planner, you know, you don't work under like the supervision of people, like people, you know, who work secular jobs, you know, you work for God, but you know, although in my situation, a pastor, you know, my pastor, you know, really would be like my supervisor, you know, that, that is my authority, that's my sending church, you know, I'm not to rebuke him. You know, I'm not to rebuke him. I'm with a mission board. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not to rebuke, you know, people like older men of God that are, you know, that are part of the mission board. You know, that I'm in, you know, just, you know, just speaking here. You know, the Lord, you know, he has a, he has a way of doing things here. You know, things that are gender specific, like with men and women. And then like with elderly men, you know, elderly women, young men and younger women. And see, that is very important. The point that we're making is all these things are very important to the or very important to the Lord. Like some people, because some people I know can say in this day time, well, it's not that important. You know, it's not that important. It's not that bad, you know, for a woman to teach a man. Or, you know, do we only have to have men preachers, etc.? You know, it's it's not that, you know, not that bad, you know, for a woman, you know, to work in the uh, you know, to have a secular career. But the Bible says there that the word of God. Be not blasphemed. See, that is extremely important. You know, the Apostle Paul there is hitting it, you know, hitting it hard. You know, you do these things here. You know, you keep this order, you know, of how a home should be and how a church should be. See, here we also, you know, see how a church should be here with women and men. You know, with elderly men, young men, young women, you know, that the word of God be not blasphemed. That's extremely, you know, extremely important you know, to the, uh, you know, to the Lord's order of things there. And so now we go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, here under a teaching woman. Of course, this is a text that uh, that we have used before a couple of times. You know, we, we've used this as a reference, like in our, uh, like in our preaching, you know, preaching and other studies and things that we've done there multiple times. And it's very good, very appropriate. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So here, there's only one God. There, there's only that there's only one Lord. You know, we don't live for the things of the world. We live for the things of God. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. See, you love God more than anybody. And like, like we've already looked at here, like when we looked at being a submissive us about uh, how ladies are to be submissive. You know, they're not just submissive to, you know, give an account to a man. They're submissive because that's the Lord's order of things. If you love God, you're going to keep his order. You know, that goes for everybody, not just women. That goes for men alike. Elderly women, elderly men, young men, young women, kids. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. You know, you, we keep an order of things here because that's how God intended for it to be. You know, that's how God created people. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. See, going back to what we preached the first night there, we got to have the word of God in our heart. You know, that's why we have to give ourselves to, to the word of God, to the study of God's word. You know, you're not going to know the Bible unless you study it. And that's a big issue that we have in this day and time. You know, even in fundamental churches, you know, we have people that don't know things. See, we keep the word of God in our heart. <clears throat> and verse number seven, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. See, there it says diligently. That means you work hard at it. You know, you keep at it. You know, you don't be slack. You be consistent with it. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. You be very diligent in teaching the word of God to your children. And this is certainly what a woman should be doing with, you know, her children, especially her young children. <clears throat> you talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, whenever you have spare time, when you're having family time, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down before you go to bed at night, and when thou risest up. That's a high standard right there is what Moses is saying. You teach them in the morning, you teach them at night time, you teach them when you have spare time. Teach them every chance you get, you teach the word of God. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. See, you keep it in your brain. 
You have a brain for a reason, to learn things. And above all, you learn the word of God. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. You put it externally. You put it externally there. <clears throat> and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. See, the Lord just gave these people this land here. And see, this is the reason here why we are to teach our children all of these things, why Moses here is being so dogmatic, I guess we could say, about teaching the Word of God to your children at all times. Verse number 12. Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. See, you've got to teach the Word of God to young people so that they will carry it on. Because, see, it only takes one generation, and we've saw that, folks. You know, we, we've saw that in this world. I've given those illustrations before, and I'll, I'll give them right now, quickly. Because it could just take one generation where, boom, you forget. This one generation does not abide by the Word of God. If one generation just drops the ball, and I think we we're seeing that presently. Like, I'll kind of start now, then I'll go in reverse a little bit. But like I've said, you know, you just go back a couple of generations, like to the early 1900s, and think of how different the U.S., you know, used to be. But why is it now in 2021, you know, where we have to, you know, take time and preach these types of things, talking about, you know, the differences between genders? Because now, you know, we have women, you know, who want to run everything, who want to be in a position of authority, when that is clearly against the teaching of the Scriptures. That's because the last couple of generations failed in that manner. They failed. You know, that's why I have, as I've already given to you, like I have relatives and I know multitudes of people. You know, people that I was raised with that no longer go to the house of God anymore because their parents never, hardly ever, well, most of them never, just being honest, never took them to church. That's good. But right there, Whenever you have spare time, teach them in the morning, at night time. Never taught their children the word of God. Never encouraged them to be a prayer warrior. You know, never encouraged them to study the Bible. Never encouraged them to be anything for the Lord. Yeah, we're hard on them, like I said. We're hard on them with a lot of secular activities. Like with being good ball players and all that stuff. But that's certainly where it ended. Not the things of God. Yeah, like I said, then again, going back a little further, like, like with where I'm going, I'm a church planter in northern New York. 200 years ago, that really wasn't needed because they had a great revival up there. You know, like I said, Daniel Nash and Abel Clary, two of the most important men of God during that time, are buried in northern New York. But now look how different New York State is. I mean, just, you know, a liberal cesspool. And it's not just liberalism, but the thing about liberalism is liberalism is completely against the Bible. You know, 200 years later, a place that is completely spiritually different. You know, a place that was once a powerhouse, you know, for, you know, for revival with people getting saved and all, people closing down bars, politicians apologizing for lies that they told and all. But now a place that is completely different. You know, churches that aren't even used anymore up there. You know, you got lots of churches, Baptist and Protestant churches. You know, that, that were once used, but now just empty buildings. Empty buildings. Now look at England. Saying, you know, that, that, that happened with England as a whole, as, as a whole country. You know, as a whole country, you know, where revival started, like in the 1700s. Then a place just... Within a couple of hundred years, just, you know, completely, completely different. Just spiritually desolate. That's why it is so important that we do these things, because the next generation would just forget about it. Now we go to the 78th Psalm. Psalm 78. Psalm 78, the first eight verses. 
Give ear, O my people, to my law, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. See, we got to listen to what, to what the Word of God says. I will open my mouth in parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which ye have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. See, it was passed on from previous generations. We will not hide them from the children, shewing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob. See, going back all the way to the time of Jacob. <clears throat> and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. See, making sure here that this is passed on to the next generation, that the generation to come might know them. Even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. See, it must be carried on. It has to be carried on. It has to be taught to the next generation, because if not, it's going to fall. And I know we're kind of talking here about, uh, like, like, kind of more like in, in a corporate manner, you know, talking about a whole community, you know, maybe even a whole country here, and it's very applicable to that. But, you know, what about your own family? You know, just think about that for, you know, think about that for a moment. You know, what about simply like, you know, things I've mentioned within your own family? Like I said, relatives that I have, you know, now people who are my age that don't go to church anymore. You know, like, like, like that cousin of mine, what about her children? They're not being raised in church. See, how about just make it your own individual family there? Because I know that that might not hit home as much, you know, with the things that I've said, you know, about countries and regions as a whole. But what about your own, you know, what about your own family? You know, like my relatives, you know, like I mentioned, you know, their immediate family, their children aren't going to church. They're not raising their children in church. You know, don't you want your kids to be successful and to love God? Well, you got to do this here. What happens if you don't? They have nothing at all to do with God. And then lastly here, well, actually, I'm sorry, not lastly. We got a couple more sub points here. We'll try to get, we might have to wait till the, to, uh, till the last night, tomorrow night, to do the last one, which will be fine. But let her see now, we look at an honorable woman, looking at an honorable woman. And we're going to go to that familiar, trusty old text there in Proverbs 31. I already read a couple of these verses. But we'll go through these, these things here and mention them. <clears throat> we won't necessarily spend a, a multitude of time like on one, you know, on one verse, but get our point across here. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Like we looked at that last night about a submissive woman. You know, how the Lord, you know, thought so highly like of a lady, you know, with a meek and quiet spirit. And we find it again. A virtuous woman, her price is far above rubies. You know, it's, it's far above, you know, the nice jewelry that the world has. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. See, like we said there, you know, a woman's attention is to be to her husband and taking care of him. And that husband, he safely trusts in his wife. His, you know, she has his heart. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. See, all the days there she'll do him good. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her fruit from afar. See, she's a hard worker providing for her family. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. See, there she rises while it is yet night. That means she rises early in the morning, the Bible you know, greatly endorses that there for everybody. Like it also says in Proverbs, rise early and seek the Lord. Like I wrote an article about that. <clears throat> she considereth the field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hand. She planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She, she works and providing for her family. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. See, she works through the nights. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. See, she's a woman with a good heart. You know, she's a woman who gives to charity. 
No, she gives to the poor and the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. <laughs> uh, moving to northern New York, like my wife's from Alabama, I need to read her that verse. Of course, that there is simply saying, you know, a woman, you know, she's still going to go get what she needs outside even when it snows. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her, her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. See, she provides things for her husband. So her husband, you know, can do his job, can do his work and what the Lord has for him to do. <clears throat> you know, she is a great helpmeet. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. And we already looked at that verse there. Let's see, she certainly is. You know, she's a wise woman. She's a woman who knows the word of God. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. She doesn't waste time. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. See, this is a woman who's praised by her husband. See, that's what men ought to do, is to compliment their wives well. And her children as well. Her children call her blessed. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. See, a wonderful woman there, an honorable woman. Now we go here to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 8 and 9. says here, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. See, that's just how God's order of things there is. See, a man cannot exist, generally speaking. A man cannot exist without the, without the help of a woman. I know there's some exceptions to that. We have exceptions to that in the Bible. You know, like with the Apostle Paul and all. And I, like I know, you know, there, there are a couple of single men that I know. But generally speaking, though, you know, a man has to have a woman, a man has to have a, you know, a man has to have a woman do those things for him. You know, those, you know, domestic household things. That's just how the Lord ordered it. You know, because I, I mean, I, I know, I understand that. I was there, you know, I didn't get married till I was 28. I was in the Navy as a single man. You know, and even though I had a chow hall and things to eat in, you know, at times, you know, times in my life, you know, that was difficult, you know, without the help of a woman. You know, that's why then I diligently, diligently prayed for a wife, because, you know, I had to do my own laundry. You know, I had to do my own cleaning and things, and that's very difficult for a man. Especially, you know, whenever you have children, because, you know, that's just how God created, you know, things. A woman, you know, is to give attention to her husband and the children. You know, a man, like for, like for this, for example, like, like I know some men, you know, who have had their wives pass away, you know, and that was extremely difficult on them. Because, you know, like a woman, a woman can make it. A woman can make it easier without a man. But a man, you know, a grown man has a very difficult time without a woman. That's just how the Lord created things. And Proverbs eleven sixteen now. Proverbs eleven sixteen, And we will be through after we read this here. We do have one more thing that we're going to look at there about... Uh, about a godly woman. We're actually going to look at the opposite of that, the deplorable woman. But I said we'll get into that tomorrow night. Proverbs eleven sixteen. A gracious woman retaineth honor, and strong men retain riches. See, a gracious woman there, that is a woman of honor, a woman who is gracious, who is just following the word of God. A woman who's thankful, a woman who's thankful with what God has given her. See, people in this day and time are trying to reverse that. And they are very, very wrong for it. See, a godly woman is going to be gracious to have a family, to have a husband, you know, to joy, to joy in raising her children. And as we said there, tomorrow night, uh, we, uh, Tomorrow night it'll be fine. We'll get into, uh, we'll look at the opposite of this honorable woman tomorrow night. And then we will, uh, and then uh, we will also look at godly children. We'll look at godly children. We should be able to do all of that within just about 30 or 35 minutes. 
said, I don't like uh, really going over there. I think, you know, you lose most people's interest and all and just how the Lord has geared us here in this meeting. But uh, thank you so much there for uh, being with us, for being with us there tonight and looking at those wonderful things from the word of God about a godly woman. Oh, so needed. Amen. Oh, oh so needed. And this day in time. And so come on back there and be with us uh, tomorrow night as we uh, close this out, looking at the biblical order of a family. Amen. And we'll close in prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the innocence of sin. Thank you for all that you've done, all the blessings, Lord, that you've bestowed upon our hearts and upon our lives. And I pray, Lord, that we would just to take these things to heart. May we apply it to our heart and apply ourselves to your word and doing things in a biblical manner. Bless all our dear listeners, we pray. Give us all that which we need. May Christ be honored and glorified, Lord, throughout all that we do. For it's in Christ's name we do pray all these things. Lord, bring us back tomorrow night as well. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much, folks, for being with us, and we will see you tomorrow night till the day breaks and the shadows flee away. I am Brother Coop, and I love you, and I appreciate you.